start writing your academic CV. If you haven't already, even you're in your first year, you need to write one right now because you never know. You may have an email about a scholarship that is coming up and the deadline can be next week. Have something that you can edit so that you have a higher chance to stand out from that competition. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Writing a CV and keeping it updated is a really important habit for you as a PhD student, even before you graduate. First of all, why do you need a CV? You may ask, because even you haven't graduated yet, you need your CV to compete for scholarship. You may need to go to a conference and someone might consider you for a travel award. You will need to submit a CV for it. Certainly it is like money. You need to make sure you have it written professionally, have your friend check it for you so that you don't have typos or embarrassing alignments or format. A little story about my last application of this postdoc, which just ended in April. I was actually in the crisis. My lab has run out of funding and upon really urgent notice, I was searching everywhere. And at that time, I think I was really lucky to find this position in France. It was a topic similar to my PhD research. I got the interview on a Tuesday. I remember submitting the CV on a Thursday. I got a job at the spot when I got interviewed. So that was less than one week I got a postdoc offer. I'm not saying this to brag because in hindsight, I know that the lab was running late to spend the money for the postdoc. So they had to hire someone quickly, otherwise it will be lost. Does it mean I am really outstanding? Or maybe it means I was prepared. If I was not prepared with my CV, then I would not be ready for the opportunity. So today, let's go through what are the sessions you need for a professional academic CV. The way I write my CV has been following this book called The Professor's End because when I first started writing this CV version, I was trying to apply to be an assistant professor. But of course, I never heard back. By never hearing back, you will know in academia, it means no. But I'd like to remind you, in any rejection in your life, a no to normal people is no and you will cry. For academic scientists, you need to learn that a no is a not now and not here. And that's going to open the perspective that you will need to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. Someday you will find a job that you will be fully satisfied with and it will be the best opportunity. So instead of recording myself talking and pointing, it might be easier to just take you behind the screen. This was the CV that has success for me to get a postdoc position. On the top right corner, provide your contact detail, your address, telephone, and email. In the middle, you will have your full name spelled out. If you already graduated PhD, you will add PhD after your name. A point about education section, you may not be already finishing PhD, just have a bracket and expected graduation date. Use space to make sure the date 2009, 2018 is on the rightmost side. Add just a few lines of what skills you have in each position that is relevant to the position that you are applying to. I always put asterisk, highlight all the duty of my position, and I put asterisk to demonstrate I had productivity beside these objectives. In academic CV, you will put the full reference of your publication with all the authors, page numbers, all the details of your paper. It's a session called publications. Many PhD students hesitate to add more to this session because those work are not ready. You can put anything you know realistically can go to a journal as an in-prep publication and you can put a tentative name to it. If you have submitted a paper and you have been waiting for the reviewer to get back to you, that is a section called under review and you are allowed to just put the full title of what you have submitted 
so you can show that you are ready to publish as soon as those work are moving forward. And of course, you have a list for published work. And that will add to your publication list. And because I'm a postdoc, I always highlight my students by underlining the name on the publication. I want to reflect that in my publication list saying I'm not only good at publishing, I'm also a good mentor for students. You always tailor your CV, highlight the relevant work. So I highlight the paper that could be of interest to my current PI. There's a session called professional experience. I put all of my short research trip and I listed out the institution, the location, address of the host and the year. Conference activity can include all your oral presentation, poster presentation, and nowadays you may not be traveling at all in 2020, so you could include online and webinar presentation if you are giving any. Put it in a professional long format for people to understand where you've been to, what is the title of your talk. If you have been teaching and you are TA, you also want a session about your teaching duty. Teaching experience could vary so I found this is important to put an equivalent title so that people who are reading can connect instantly to what you have done. For example, when I was in Hong Kong, I'm called a demonstrator. And in America, this is the equivalent of teaching assistant. I've mentioned over and over again how it is important for you to take professional development hour. 10% of your week should go there. If you gain any certification, this is the session you can add to your CV. Some of the senior PhD students could already start reviewing for journals, so make sure you write down all these journal names that you have served a role as an editor or a reviewer listed out as journal review and editorial service section. Most of the conferences you go to will have you to pay a membership fee for at least a year. Make sure you take note and put them as your professional society. Sometimes your university might have already paid for them. When I was in the US, my university has already paid for MPA, National Postal Association, and we are automatically a member. I was a member of National Postal Association. I always put it there um, to recognize that I'm an active postdoc researcher, cares about professional development. Usually you put two to three references. So I always put people who are closely working with me and know my work ethic, my performance during those projects. Usually it is your PhD advisor, it could be a postdoc advisor that is overseeing your work. Put everything, the title, the address, telephone number, email, so that you make it easy for the person reviewing your CV to reach out to your references. The CV is a long document to represent all your achievement. So you want to make sure you make all the formatting alignment really pleasing to your eye. And a good way to check, because this is very arbitrary, it's hard to give you a hard and fast rule in this video, but a good way to check it is to give it to a friend and just ask them to spend 30 seconds flipping it. What is the biggest take home message after flipping it for 30 seconds? You will get an honest opinion on how fast your funding panel is going to look at your CV or your search committee who is going to see if you're a good professor or not. But bear in mind, I got to postdoc position. So if you really want more in-depth advice on associate professor interview, this is a book so far, the most updated and give a lot of good guidelines. But if you're a PhD trying to look for a postdoc, I think my format will do the job. One thing I want to bring up is your CV can be written, but they are mostly built by you. You can only develop it better by working hard and achieve all these milestones and goals during your PhD, like publishing a paper, going to a conference, having a poster award from a conference. The moment you get the award, make sure you go back and type that line in your CV and update it monthly. You will thank yourself six months later, you may not remember what you've got. It will be much tougher to do. So I leave you with that and I hope you will start 
writing your academic CV. If you haven't already, even you in your first year, you need to write one right now because you never know. You may have an email about a scholarship that is coming up and the deadline can be next week. With that time notice, you want to make sure you have something that you can edit so that you have a higher chance to stand out from that competition. If you like my content, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss anything in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.